you're watching T.C. McCarthy, the most handsome and exhausted science fiction author on video. I just woke up literally and uh, haven't showered, haven't shaved. You can probably tell by just watching. But um, I had to do another video. About, I had to repeat a video that I had already completed because as it turns out, you know, occasionally I get the science or, or a detail wrong in one of my videos. And when I do, I try and put like a little thing right here or something that basically corrects the error that I made. But in this case, the error was so big and propagated throughout the video, I I actually have to redo the entire thing and I'm on a tight schedule I've got a book I'm writing right now the second book in a series um, and you know I just I just had to get up and do this video again as is so I, I apologize this is TC McCarthy basically unvarnished <laughs> anyway um, remember buy my book tiger burning pre-order it uh, pew put a video here explaining why pre-ordering is so important but let's go ahead and dive into the topic of this video and that is cryonics or cryogenics I use those terms interchangeably I know there's there if you, if you get a, if you get really deep into the the study of this particular topic some people will prefer the term cryonics to, to describe a certain set of circumstances versus cryogenics and I just don't care for my purposes those terms are interchangeable now what is cryonics and cryogenics well it's the it's the it's the science of freezing a living being a, a, a subject it could be either a test animal or a human being and then reanimating them by thawing them sometime in the future it's the whole concept in science fiction you see it all the time you know in aliens for example one of my favorite movies all the space marines were basically you know you, as you travel uh, to different stars you freeze the people and then wake them up once they get to their destination uh, so that's a it's a it's a kind of technology that shows itself throughout science fiction and I'm a big fan of it because it has its basis in reality. There are robust scientific programs underway right now studying how to freeze a human being and then thaw him or her later on sometime in the distant future. And some believe that's the way we're going to travel to distant stars. We're never going to come up with a drive that will get us there fast enough, you know, in, in a lifetime, for example. And so you've got this concept of maybe generational spaceships where they're huge and multiple generations of humanity pass by before you reach the destination. Or you can freeze them, put them into suspended animation, and then thaw the, the spacecraft personnel once you reach the destination. But one of the big problems that we have with using freezing and thawing as a means of putting people in suspended animation is the fact that ice is a very interesting compound. It's the solid phase of water. And the unique or kind of, it's actually a fortunate characteristic for us, for human beings and Earth, that water, when it freezes, actually when it forms a crystalline structure, it expands and becomes less dense. And so you see what we, when you put ice cubes in a glass of water, they float. They don't sink to the bottom. They're less dense than the water itself. And so they float. And because they're less dense, they occupy a bigger volume. Ice occupies a bigger volume than it does for the equivalent amount of water. Why is that fortunate? Well, for example, fish can survive in frozen lakes in the wintertime because they freeze from the top down. They don't freeze from the bottom up. If they froze from the bottom up, then basically you would get a solid block of ice in lakes and water bodies. And uh, there are some fish that can survive frozen in, in the ice and hibernate. But we're not going to go into details there. Just suffice it to say that for purposes of life on Earth, it's a great thing that ice, ice has those 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 kinds of characteristics but it's not a great thing for the for the subject of cryonics or cryogenics why is it not a great thing well imagine ice forming in your let's say you're freezing a single cell so that cell would be comprised almost you know the majority of it would be water and if you were freezing it on a petri dish that contained nothing else the water inside that cell would expand and you'd run the risk of the cell actually bursting well now now take a human being for example a collection of cells multiple cells in that case it's interesting it's counterintuitive uh, you might think that the cells inside of a human body as you freeze them would burst because the water inside would expand. That's not what happens. Primarily what happens is that the water exit the, exits the cell as temperatures drop. And so you get this interstitial collection of water between cells. And then that water freezes and expands and it crushes the cells in between and damages the cells that way. And so the, sub, the concept of freezing people, you know, um, and waking them up later, it causes a lot of cellular damage, and basically there would be no chance of recovering somebody on the other end. Now, we've made a lot of advances, however, and in the past few years, I think there have been some research studies that have succeeded in using a couple of different means for, for preventing that kind of damage from happening. The first, cryoprotectants. Compounds that you put into tissue that basically prevent the, the, the water from freezing um, in a way that would form those crystals 
crystals and form uh, expanding ice. And you get this process, if you, if you uh, speed the, the freezing process at the appropriate rate, you can do what's called vitrification. So instead of forming a, a kind of crystalline solid ice, it forms what's called a glass. It's a amorphous, unorganized, uh, more dense form of ice. And what happens there is you don't have nearly as much of a problem with expansion, far less damage to cells, and you're, you're basically good to go. And then just recently, I can't remember the details, but I think just recently, scientists have combined that concept of using cryoprotectants and uh, a new way of using lasers to warm up at, the, at a precise rate the, uh, the experiment, the, the subject that they were freezing. I think in this case it was a frog. It was some kind of animal. So they put an animal to sleep and then successfully resurrected it after a period of suspended animation. That is a big deal. We are on the cusp of being able to freeze human beings and resurrect them or, or awaken them at some later date. Now, we've been doing something like that for a long time. If you're rich enough and you have enough money, you've probably heard of this concept where people die and right at the moment of their death, rather than being taken to the morgue and buried and all that kind of stuff, they paid enough money to have their entire body cryoprotected and then frozen for eternity. The hopes being that sometime in the future, scientists or doctors will come up with a way to cure the disease they died from. They can unfreeze these people and then uh, and and then heal them and, and wow, you know, now you've got more life sometime in the distant future. The other concept is some people will just have their heads frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, so that you can attach a brain in the future to a, to a robot or something like that. I don't know. I don't know why people do some of the things they do. The point in this video is I think we're very close to having suspended animation become a reality. Uh, it may happen in my lifetime. It may, in fact, happen in my lifetime. And once that happens, it opens the door to a lot of different things in terms of space exploration. So keep, you know, I, I will keep an eye on that particular topic um, and look for advances because I think it's absolutely awesome. But in the meantime, buy my book, Tiger Burning, pre-order it. I'll put a picture again here and uh, definitely pre-order it. It'll help me with my first week of sales, which are important for getting on bestsellers list. Uh, I think you'll like it. It's science fiction and transmission. Hey, TC McCarthy here, the most eclectic and entertained science fiction author on YouTube, maybe even the internet. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. As usual, buy my books. I've got a new one coming out in July, and uh, I'll have a giveaway coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Appreciate you subscribing to my channel, and please, 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 please don't forget to click that little bell icon so that whenever I upload new content, you get notified. Thanks again. See you soon.